Hello, this is James Tanner. Welcome to the Genealogy Star video blog. You can read my blog posts on Google Blogger, or you can view some of them here on my YouTube channel. You can also try a search for Genealogy Star. About 10 years ago, I began trying to distill the essence of genealogical research into some basic rules. I published the first six rules of genealogy back on July 1st, 2014, in a blog post entitled, Six of the Basic Rules of Genealogy. This short list included the first and most famous basic rule of genealogy, when the baby was born, the mother was there. Since then, I have published eight more rules for a total of 14. When the entire genealogical world seems to be against you finding your ancestors, just remember these rules and you will soon be on your way to finding that elusive ancestor. Rule number three is every person who ever lived has a unique birth order and a unique set of biological parents. This video is about the third rule of genealogy in a series where I will cover all the 14 rules, each one in its own short video. This rule addresses the challenges adoptions, foster children, guardianships, stepchildren, and other relationships that may exist in different times and different cultures. You might not see the importance of this rule until you've struggled with the identity of an ancestor that may or may not belong in a family. In the recent past, this rule has been reinforced by the ascendancy of DNA testing as an accepted part of genealogical research. Many of my friends and acquaintances have been surprised to find that the traditional view of their ancestry is not supported by their DNA test. This is particularly true of those who have discovered that they were adopted or that one of their known ancestors was not actually their genetic ancestor. This rule also implies the need to be acquainted with the changes in the laws of adoption over the years. Adoption in the United States can be divided into two major time periods, before and after the passage of the first modern adoption laws beginning in 1851. In both eras, the idea of protecting the child from knowledge of the adoption has, in many cases, made determining the ancestry of an adoptive child extremely difficult. For example, a tradition in my family was that a particular ancestor was adopted. After searching for years, I found one church record with the notation that he was adopted. It was only with the advent of online digital records that we found a likely set of parents for this individual. Extensive DNA testing ultimately showed that we were related to the likely parents and supports their identity as the parents of our ancestor and demonstrates that he was adopted despite any documentary support. Adoption laws are likely unique in almost every country in the world. So why do we have to be reminded that every person has a unique birth order as well as a unique set of biological parents? It is apparent from looking at online family trees that there are a multitude of opinions about the biological makeup of some families. Here is an extreme example from the FamilySearch.org family tree. Please note, this is an actual copy of entries in the FamilySearch.org family tree. Let's see how this works. William Francis Tanner Sr. is born in 1657 and marries his first wife in about 1686. His wife, who was born in 1664, has one child and may have dialed in childbirth in 1687. William Francis Tanner Sr. apparently remarries a woman born in 1669 who manages to live until 1708. However, their first child is born in 1681, while he was still married to his first wife and six years before his first wife dies. William Francis Tanner Sr. and his second wife apparently have seven children, including the one born while his first wife was still alive, this must have been quite newsworthy back in colonial Rhode Island. 
His second wife has two children in 1692. The last child is born in 1716, eight years after the second wife dies in 1708. Meanwhile, William Francis Tanner Sr. marries yet a third wife in 1688, before his second wife dies and has five more children. The first child is born in 1710, 13 years before William Francis Tanner Sr. marries his third wife. In fact, from the entries, all five of the children were born before the couple got married. The last child is born in 1719, when William Francis Tanner is 62 years old. One of the children was born in Massachusetts. Many of these children were born in South Kingston, Rhode Island, which is interesting since South Kingston was not divided from North Kingston until 1722 to 1723, long after the last child was born. By the way, there is no William Francis Tanner Jr., so it's strange that he's a senior. Surprisingly, William Francis Tanner Sr. has 77 sources attached. These sources list men named William Tanner and William Francis Tanner, born in 1634, 3 July 1708, and about 1660 in Rhode Island and christened in Chipstead, Surrey, England, in 1657. Considering all this, I might also ask, where did the middle name come from? There are multiple considerations that need to be reviewed before concluding that a child is the child of a particular set of parents. Fundamentally, the birth and death dates of the parents and the date of the birth of the child should always be considered. Adoption may be more difficult to detect, but continued research in, or in some cases, DNA testing, may indicate that a child was adopted. As is the case with all the basic rules of genealogy, this rule is a reminder that obvious relationships may not be accurate. Remember rule number three is every person who ever lived has a unique birth order and a unique set of biological parents. This concludes some of the basic ideas of the third rule of genealogy. Now there are 11 more rules of genealogical research to go. In between all my other activities, I will be posting additional short videos highlighting each rule.